Okay students, in this video we're going to look at adding score and HP variables to our character and how we can interact with them with other blueprints. So for starters, I'm going to go into my third person character blueprint. So here I am in the third person character and we can see we have a bunch of different pieces here that make uh, them work. And uh, I'm going to, over on the left side here in the variables section, I'm going to create some new variables. The first is going to be health. And by default, you can see it made it a Boolean variable, and I want it to be an integer. Um, it sometimes would make sense to make it a float if I was going to have like complicated damage numbers. But for our simple blueprints here, I'm going to go with integer so everything stays as whole numbers. Uh, and I'm going to make a second variable and call it score. And it defaults to integer now because I just switched this one to integer. Um, and uh, I'm going to compile so that I can set some default values for these. So a default value of 0 for score is good for me. And a default value of health I'm going to change to 100. Uh, I'm also going to expose this variable as public so that if I want to, I can set a different starting health for my character in my level. Um, one thing I'm going to do here that can be useful uh, when debugging what you're working on is I'm going to make it print a string uh, to the world. So I'm going to type here print string. I'm attaching it to my event begin play node. Now some stuff you'll notice about this node here is that it says development only, which means it only shows up when I'm in engine. If I were to export uh, the project with this in it, this node won't do anything. Um, and what I want it to do is I'm just going to drag my health variable here, get health, and I'm going to put it into my string and it converts the integer into a string. Uh, and I'm going to just put a delay on here of, let's say, um, 0.5 of a second. And I'm going to send it right back into itself. So what this is doing is it's going to print to the screen in my upper left here whatever number is my current health. And then it's going to wait half a second and it's going to do it again. Uh, and this can be useful just so I can keep track of what things can hurt me. So if I hit play, you'll see there in the upper left, I have a bunch of 100s coming down that show up. So other things going on in this level, I have here a basic respawn that uh, if I fall into it, will put me back here uh, at the start. And I have my load to next level and I have my door. So let's start looking at some things that we can do now that we have an HP and a score. So uh, I'm going to go, this is my level blueprint here. You can see we've got our key and door stuff from earlier. And uh, we've got here our begin play, get the player characters, location and rotation, so that we can set up, uh, if you fall on the respawn volume, go ahead and teleport. Well, we've been using this cast to quite a bit in some of our uh, blueprints. And what it does is it makes sure that we have the player character here. It, it reaches out from our level blueprint or whatever blueprint we're in to the player character. And here it reaches out by saying, hey, you're the other actor that's touching me. But this node here, this as player character, lets us get access to variables that are in other blueprints. Because over here, we are in the level blueprint and we don't have a health and a score. But if I drag off of this here, I can type health, which is literally based on the name I gave it. Uh, and I have here a get health and a set health. So I'm going to get get health. Uh, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get a set health. And I'm going to drag this in in between my teleport. Because what I want is if I fall off the platform, I want there to be a health cost to this. Now, set variables will set it to exactly what I want. So I, I don't want to use this because then it'll, it'll keep setting it to that number. So I have this get health, and I'm going to drag off. And I'm just going to press minus on my keyboard. You could also type out the word subtract. 
but it's giving me the subtract operator. And how much do I want to subtract from my health? Well, I'm going to subtract 5. So I'm going to delete the 0 and put a 5 and connect this into the new health. So this is saying take my current health, subtract 5, and set it as my new health, and then respawn me. So if I hit compile and now play, you can see the 100s in the upper left. And if I fall off, I will go back. And now it is saying 95. I just lost five of my health. And now it says 90. So let's look at other ways we can deal damage. We could just create a zone that is harmful. Uh, I'm going to put here uh, a, let's see. Let's just make a basic uh, cylinder shape here, uh, and I'm going to flatten it, and then um, let's let's pretend this is, this is harmful for some reason. So I'm going to make it a little bigger, and we could also do this with a trigger volume. We could do it with whatever, but I'm going to do it with this object here, uh, and I'm going to rename my cylinder here edit, rename, and I'm going to call it hurt cylinder. Uh, and I'm going to go into my level blueprint. And let's say on, uh, let's call an event for that actor. Let's say collision hit. If something hits this, and we could have things that spin or other things that do stuff. But let's say if I hit this cylinder, we're going to cast to the third person character. And if you're using the first person character, you would cast to first person character. Uh, I'm going to make sure we know that it is the other actor that is touching us here. And once again, I'm going to get our health and set our health. Uh, and we're going to subtract. And I'm going to subtract, let's say, 20, because I want it to be really hurtful. And it will connect there. Okay, and we'll hit compile. And so now here I am at 100, and if I jump on the cylinder, you can see it's now 80. If I jump and hit it again, it is now 60. So we can continue to hurt ourselves. Um, now we could, as our third person character, have a, uh, a check in here. So we could, let's say, put in a tick event which will happen every frame. And it could look for a, uh, we're going to make a comparison. So let's, um, let's get our health here. And we could check to see if it is uh, less than or equal to, and I just put in that less than sign. So I'm gonna see here if it is less than or equal to, um, zero, which is good, right? So is health less than or equal to zero? Uh, let's do a branch, which is going to check a condition. And this is our condition. Is health less than or equal to zero? And if so, uh, we're going to do some things here. We could uh, disable input. So this is a fun node. And what it does is it basically makes it so the player controller, which is us, it is self, uh, can't have any inputs anymore. Your your W, A, S, and D keys won't work. You won't be able to move. You won't be able to look around, so it'll freeze you. Uh, we would, if we had it set up already, we would put a HUD bit in here that says, like, game over. Uh, but we don't have a HUD set up yet. But I'm just going to put a delay. So we'll say it will delay for a second. Um, and then what we can do is we can uh, reset the current level. So we can uh, get level, get current level name, and then we can open level by name and just plug that in here. So basically, if our, it's constantly checking, and if our health ends up less than zero or equal to zero, it's a less than or equal to zero, it's gonna turn off the input, I'll be unable to move, uh, it'll wait a second, and then it'll reload the game. So uh, that should be uh, 10 jumps there. Now, notice by walking in, it took a bunch real quick because I wasn't jumping. 
So here I have 80, 60, 40, 20, and I'm going to try to look around. It froze my looking around, waited a second, and then reloaded me. Be aware, sometimes because of physics, if you like walk into something and you have event hit, it'll count as multiple hits. So here as I walk, I just went straight to 20, if you see that. So it hit is not always your best option. Often you want uh, begin overlap or things like that. Um, other ways that we can add stuff, I have a very simple blueprint here um, called Trap Launcher. Um, and what this is, is uh, it spawns a projectile that's going to shoot this way. And that projectile is here. It's just called Arrow Projectile. Uh, and it has no programming in it. It just has an existing projectile movement. So I gave it an initial speed of 1,000, uh, max speed of 1,000, and uh, I turned off gravity on it. So these are like bullets that fly in a straight line forever. Um, you can see here, if we look in the viewport, they have a collision component and a sphere. And that sphere is just there to be uh, a pic the, the visual of it. Um, it doesn't do any physics or anything fancy. It just shoots in a straight line. Uh, and the uh, trap launcher, all it does is uh, when it begins play, it finds the uh, location that the static mesh here, this trap launcher, is in, and it uses that location to spawn the projectile bullet. Um, and we will have another video on how to like create this guy here. But basically, all it's doing is creating a projectile bullet that moves. Um, and as we look here, we'll see the bullets sort of fly by me right there in the background. So what we want to do is make it so that this bullet can hurt our player. So I'm going to go into the arrow projectile event graph, and I'm again going to use event hit. Uh, and here we are once again going to cast to the third person character because we want it to be when we hit them and they are the other in this instance. And what we want it to do if I hit the third person character, as usual, I'm going to grab my get health. I'm going to once again grab my set health. Uh, and we are going to set it to subtract, uh, let's say, 10 from health. And uh, one last important thing I want to do here is I want to destroy self. And self in this instance is the bullet, because otherwise, uh, the bullet will fly into us, and it will keep hurting us and do like an infinite damage. So we want it to hit us once and then cease to exist so that it only does the damage to us once. Again, quite simple. You can see here, as I just got hit by the bullet, it's taking damage off in my upper left. Um, it's also currently got a collision component, so it hit my camera there. But as I'm doing this here, it will keep taking damage off. Um, as they hit me, and I can speed this up and go jump over here a couple times to get hurt and have it restart us. Now, you can also pretty easily uh, create a power-up that when you hit it, instead of subtracting from your HP, it adds to your HP. Um, you can also treat score the same way. So I have um, the platformer assets here, and I'm going to grab the coin blueprint. And I don't currently have a way that we're exposing the score, but I suppose I could open my third person character and change health here to being score. If I'm testing my score, we can, um, oh, I deleted that from the wrong place. That's get health. There we go. We wanted it here. We want it to, uh, to show the score what our score is, is the string. Uh, and I'm just going to go into this coin um, blueprint we have here. And we can see it spins. And it, when something overlaps with it, it destroys itself. So we want to come in here. We want to uh, exist in this space. And when we overlap, again, we want to cast to third person character. Uh, and we are the other actor. And as the third person character, we want to this time take score 
and we're going to get score and set score. And let's say the coin gives us plus one. So instead, uh, we can add to it. And when you're just adding one, you can, in fact, uh, hold shift and hit plus twice. And that'll give you increment int, which is plus plus. Uh, and we could use that instead of the set if you want. Um, but I'm just going to use a single plus here and choose add. And we're going to add one and connect it to our new score. And then it's going to destroy the actor. This is also right in here is where you would put your sound pickup noise. You know, da ding, I got my little score. And uh, you would also have the HUD update. But this should let me, much in the same way as HP, um, deal with the score. And I will just add like a couple of these here. And we'll see if I can get my score to roll up. So right now it's saying zero in the upper left. And as I'm picking up coins, I've picked up two coins, three coins, four coins, and now I have five coins, which is five score. And much like health, you could also have your player character be looking for a certain score and have it take you to the next level if you collect a certain score, if you've found all the skulls or whatever else you want to add uh, to make it you know, to be just based on the simple number, and you're doing things with a simple number using your other blueprints um, and storing that number and sending info to that number in the character.